Welcome everybody to another installment of one of the most awesome educational videos ever. Not really. Um, it's inclined planes again, but this time we're going to add friction. Now the good thing about this is you've already done inclined planes and you've done friction in our previous topic, so we're just combining the two. As before, friction acts opposite the direction an object is sliding or would slide relative to a surface. So we have a block on an incline here, and we're going to start, as always, with an FBD, where the normal force acts perpendicular to the surface, and the force of gravity acts straight down. Now, you may not be drawing a force of gravity as mg. You may already be drawing fgx and fgy. If you're doing this, that is totally fine. That's probably what I'll be doing in class. Now, the block's going to slide down the incline, or along the x-axis to the right. Therefore, friction acts opposite the way it would slide and parallel to the x-axis. The y-axis, as always, is perpendicular to the surface, and it's always a good idea to label which way is positive. Now, again, I'm always going to choose to the right on the x-axis is positive and up on the y-axis is positive. So at this point, you should have a free body diagram that basically looks like this, a normal the force of gravity in the y, the force of gravity in the x, and the force of friction. And remember, fgy is mg cosine, and fgx is mg sine of theta. So there's a little picture of our FBD. And at this point, you should not be thinking, what do I do next? It's always the same thing. You write the sum of the forces in the x equals max. The only two forces we have in the x are fgx and the force of friction. Um, as before, FGX is mg sine theta, and we already know from our previous topic that the force of friction is mu times the normal. We're going to take these two and substitute them in to our equation above, and we are left with mg sine theta minus mu times the normal equals max. Now the y-axis Again, it's going to slide down the incline, but since it never leaves the x-axis, the acceleration in the y-axis is zero. The only two forces we have in the y-axis are the normal and fgy, where fgy is mg cosine theta. So we substitute that in, and we are left with fn minus mg cosine theta. Fn is therefore mg cosine theta, and as we did in our previous topic, we take the normal that we solve for in the y, and we substitute the nor into the normal, excuse me, in the sum of the forces in the x, and we're left with this giant equation, mg sine theta minus mu mg cosine theta equals max. And that's basically it. That's your setup, and now it's time to try a sample problem. So. A 10 kilogram block is, is released on an incline, and there is friction. The question is, how fast will it be going at the bottom of the incline? Now, if you've taken good notes from the previous slides, seriously give this a shot. Turn the video off when I'm done talking, and give this thing a try. You have the equations you need. You can set it up, plug in your numbers, and solve. All right, so now is a good time. Pause the video. Now, I don't know if you paused the video or not, but I hope you did. You should have been able to do this because, honestly, the equations were laid out for you in the previous slides. And they were basically right here. Some of the forces in the x, some of the forces in the y. In the y-axis, we solve for the normal. And remember, we substitute that in for the force of friction, or excuse me, for the normal in the equation for the force of friction. And we are left with this ginormous expression. Remember, now is a good time to ask, is the mass important or does it divide out? Well, if you take every term and divide it by mass, you will see that indeed the mass divides out. So all you're left with is 9.8 times the sine of the angle minus mu g cosine of the angle equals ax. The only thing you can possibly solve for at this point is the acceleration of the x, which is 2.41 meters per second squared. We assume that the block starts from rest, 
We know the acceleration and we know a distance. By the final velocity, we're talking about math rep number four. Plugging the numbers in, we get that the final velocity at the bottom of the incline is 4.39 meters per second. So as you can see, this is not much different than what we did yesterday in class with inclines with no friction. And we're just combining what we did in the past with our force of friction. This problem's pretty straightforward. They could get a little bit more elaborate. Like for example, here, we have a block that is gonna be pulled up an incline with a rope that's at an angle. Don't be freaking out about this, okay? Basically, you still have the same FBD. You have the normal, you have FGY and FGX. Since it's gonna be pulled up the incline, friction acts opposite the way it's sliding. And yeah, you gotta force at an angle, but you've dealt with that in the past. So here's a picture of our FBD. And don't think, just do your next steps. The sum of the forces in the X equals MAX. Here, we have three forces. The force of the rope at an angle with respect to the X axis. So that's always force of rope cosine 30. Minus the force of gravity in the X, minus the force of friction equals MAX. In the Y axis, again, we are not accelerating, but you have three forces in the Y axis. The force of the rope, sine of the angle, you have the normal, and you have the force of gravity in the Y. Now, it's not written here in this presentation, but just hear my voice. You should know what to do here. You substitute in FGX as MG sine theta. The force of friction, you substitute in U times the normal. And FGY is MG cosine theta. As you've done in the past, solve for FN and some of the forces in the Y and plug that expression into to FN for your sum of the forces in the X. Nothing has changed. So to summarize what we've done so far, we basically still break gravity up into its X and Y components because that force is at an angle with respect to X and Y. We still do the force of gravity in the Y is mg cosine theta, force of gravity in the X is mg sine theta. Hopefully at this point you're starting to memorize it after doing a few problems. And friction always acts opposite the direction an object would slide or is sliding relative to a surface. This has not changed since our previous topic. So how do you solve each problem? First, draw an FBD in which you can opt to use FGY and FGX instead of just FG. Honestly, I would start doing this as long as you can remember that FGY is using cosine and FGX is using sine. Next step, as always, use some of the forces in EX equals MAX. Some of the forces in the Y equals MAY. Is it accelerating in the Y axis? Probably not if we're on an incline. As I said yesterday, I promise if it's on an incline, I'm not gonna, there's gonna be no problem that says accelerate off the Y axis. Set up your equations using your FBD. And then, like you did in the past, you replace all these things. Substitute in mg cosine theta for FGY mg sine theta for FGX, and as we did in our past topic, mu times the normal for FF. Again, like we did in the last topic, solve for FN in your sum of the forces in the Y and substitute this into FN in your sum of forces in the X. See if mass divides out. Remember, don't just slash and burn. And that last problem, as the difficult example, if you took it far enough, you'd see that mass does not divide out. So substitute in your numbers and solve. And this is basically it. So the homework to go with this should be in that packet. If you decide, you could start it right now, or you can work it on in class tomorrow after we go over the homework. Any questions, don't hesitate. Please come in tomorrow with good notes and be prepared to work on some problems involving this video. See you tomorrow.